Hey everyone! I got my camera the right way around this time. If you were here Tuesday, um, so the video is probably a little bit down the feed. <laughs> I got my camera the wrong way around. At a moment, couldn't figure it out. What was wrong? Um, sorted it out for this time. Uh, I wanted to have a little chat about why we find it so hard to let go of children needing to be taught to read. So I work a lot with unschooling families and I'm in a lot of unschooling support groups I guess um, as well as being in the Live Play Learn Discord community which is open to everybody um, and working specifically with families in the membership and this month we really are focusing on reading and just wanted to um, pop on here and maybe talk a little bit about why we find reading like one of the last things to let go of in terms of <clears throat> fully enabling our children to learn um, what they need to when they need to and when they're ready um, because you know it's it's normal 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 uh, for most children to go to school when they're four or five years old and the first thing that happens in school getting passionate banging the thing uh, <laughs> first thing that happens in school is reading so even um, when they're in reception and it's really um, play based uh, there's a lot more freedom in sort of nursery and reception for children to um, to play lots more toys different areas around the classroom for them to do their own thing um, they can often free flow between everything from day one when children enter reception they are sat down either as a whole class or in groups and explicitly taught via some form of reading scheme um, how to read um, and we've sort of become this has just become normal this is like what children do and for the most part we believe that children learn to read when they're four or five years old um, now I have been that teacher and I've been in that classroom and I have been through that process with literally thousands of children and some of them do pick up reading and some of them don't and but all of them are in a position where it's not negotiable um, they have to sit there and go through the process one of the things that I did very early on in our unschooling journey or in just when we began home educating I knew that Biff, Chip and Kipper were coming nowhere near my kids not because um, I didn't think they would like it but quite frankly I've read I mean, the new trainers more times than the average person should ever have to. Um, yeah, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times I have listened to Biff, Chip and Kipper um, over and over again being read uh, to me and I had had enough. Um, so that is something that didn't enter our house for my own mental health and sanity. Um, and I can tell you now that none of my children are any the worse off for not having been introduced to the Oxford reading tree. Um, but nor were they introduced to any other reading scheme um, either. Um, and we're now at a point where my eldest two can read, um, you know, in line with their peers. So they're older. They're currently 16 and 14. They both learnt to read when they were about 12. 12 and a half um, and my younger two are very much going through that process now so one is nine she just turned nine and the other is 11 and they're both going through the process of grappling with the ins and outs of um, you know reading interpreting squiggles on a page into words um, none of my children learned to read when they were four or five and none of my children had an interest in learning to read when they were four 
or five years old. It's very, very different to their schooled peers. And the biggest difference that I see is that none of them have ever been made to feel bad about it. None of them have ever experienced in their family, so their immediate family, or even in their home educating community, any sort of um, shame or ridicule because they have been unable to read and they've never had to miss out on things that they love so that they can go and do more of the thing that they're struggling with or they've actually come to hate which is something I saw in schools a lot with children who didn't pick up reading at the age of four and five uh, repeatedly being removed from lessons that they really enjoyed, really engaged with, um, activities that they were good at. Um, typically things like art or science or sport so that they could go and do more of the thing that they really didn't like. Um, because, and this is the bottom line, in school reading is crucial for teaching large numbers of children at the same time. One of the things you can do when you're at home with your children is you can do things like you can read for them. You can um, help them to read things. You are on a sort of one-to-one -one, or maybe in my case one-to-four <laughs> situation uh, which is much easier to manage when children can't read. Um, so in schools, it's it's sort of crucial that as many children as possible um, can read so that you can produce instructions and worksheets. And as we know, it's quite important in schools, children can then write their answers so that you can um, monitor and mark their responses. It becomes quite integral to how school works and how um, you know adults can manage the instruction of large numbers of children. It is not essential when we are unschooling in the same way. It is not, we don't have to have children who read by a certain age so that their world opens up to them which is a really common misconception in fact i used to think oh when my eldest can learn to read he's he's he's, he's quite academic uh, my eldest um and i used to think oh when he can read or oh, like the whole world will open up to him um and it does it's just not really true the world didn't open up to him because the world was already open to him because i was there i was there when he couldn't read something to read it to him. If he had a question, I was there to help him find the answer. Oh, hi, Laura. Thanks for your comment. Um, you know, so it didn't open up to him any more than if he hadn't learnt to read. Um, because I, you know, one of the key things of unschooling is we are with our children. And so it didn't really um, change that aspect. Um, because when he wanted to read, <clears throat> I would um, read to him. And we sort of also believe that it, it provides them with a disadvantage academically. Um, because there are lots of statistics out there, and you can go and find them, about children who don't learn to read till they're later, um, not getting this, you know, the highest grades, um, maybe not making it even into university. Um, and struggling like they're long term or oh, we're about to be interrupted yeah I'm doing it live people can hear you okay. I'll come and help you figure it out in a minute um <laughs> they're long term prospects I was talking about their long term prospects um being poorer than those who can read at a young age um, but we need to remember that those statistics are based on children who have been schooled. So you're adding on not only the disadvantage that they can read in school and, and therefore access things as readily as um, other children, that they are struggling continuously with that accessibility, 
Um, we're also adding on the layers of shame that they experience because of repeatedly um, being told that they can't read and they're not very good. Um, you know, their comparison to their peers is all things that don't or shouldn't be happening in unschooling. The comparison to their peers, you know, who's on a higher reading level and who's on a lower reading level. Um, even if that isn't explicit, it is still very apparent. It's still part of the culture of schooling. Um, and again, missing out on things and having to do something that actually they're finding really, really difficult and doing it over and over again until they get it. Whereas in for unschooled children, they don't even start doing it until they're ready. So they don't have that repeated experience of failure and they don't have the repeated experience of being told they're failures um, just to, you know, top it all off. Um, in fact, what we find in children who are self-directed in their learning um, is that once they begin to read, they very quickly, like as soon as they are able to read, are um, on the same level as their school peers in terms of their reading um, ability and comprehension for the large part. And it isn't an academic disadvantage um, in terms of their prospects um, and, you know, their their later lives. And they come out of it without the layers of shame and embarrassment. Um, and unschooled um, children are really supportive of each other. That's something else I might talk about later. So all those things that we carry with us about why children need to learn to read now and why we can't let go of that um, are really based on our schooled experience and the things that we have come to believe because most of the information that we have about how um, children read and the importance of reading um, are from a schooled um, perspective which is why I'm doing a webinar to give you another perspective uh, an unschooling perspective um, on it's called let's get reading ready um, and it's really starting even before our children are interested in print on a page like what are our children doing that in their day-to-day -day lives their play how they engage with the world around them, that are actually getting them ready and giving them the skills that they need, those building blocks that they need to be able to access reading at the point that they are ready. And it'd be really lovely to see you there. Um, if you are a, a monthly member, you get access to that for free, as well as the back catalogue um, of webinars, which includes another one on reading. Um, which is available to everybody. So if you're not a member, you can still go and um, take a look at that, see if that's of interest to you. And that one is um, already available, it's pre-recorded, and is about um, four things. It's the four things you can do to help your child learn to read as an unschooling parent. And none of them are <laughs> investing the Oxford reading tree. Um, it's possible to learn to read without it. My children have proved it. Um, and I'm very happy that I didn't have to listen to Kipper's new trainers <laughs> one more time. Um, so it's really, really nice to um, chat with you this evening. And thank you for your little message. And I will see you again soon. I'll pop some links in the comments um, about the webinar and such like. Bye.